In 1864, our understanding of what it means to be human changed, when Neanderthals were identified as a distinct species of hominin. At the time, it was immensely scandalous to presume Homo sapiens weren't uniquely human. Now it's obvious that we are one of many human groups. What if the secrets of the origins of humanity were hidden, in the DNA of the Melanesian people of Oceania? The direct descendants of the first modern Homo sapiens, Melanesians have conserved in their cells, more so than any other humans on the planet, the traces of mankind's first journey to the edge of the world. Once they arrived at the end of their odyssey, these early Melanesians, with only a few exceptions, never left their remote land. Over the centuries, while other sapiens in Asia and Europe were intermixing, blurring the traces of their migrations, the genome of the first Melanesians, which is the same as that of the first Australian Aborigines, has remained essentially intact. With a unique genetic heritage, incorporating 2-4% Neanderthal and 4-6% Denisovan genes, the Melanesians are nothing less than the living record of our origins. This video is sponsored by Raid Shadow Legends, celebrating their third anniversary as one of the top RPG games. This game started strong from the very beginning and never slowed down, check out some of the amazing things that happened in the game during those years. The Doom Tower, with over 120 levels, introduced a whole world of new and terrifying bosses to slay. Raid started with hundreds of unique characters and bosses, but they have added more and more new champions. Last year Raid added a whole new faction. The Shadowkin are a tribe of warriors from the Far East, recently liberated from the reign of evil. No review can go without mentioning the newest and biggest addition to Raid, the Hydra Clan boss, a monster with multiple heads, each with a different ability. This month, for its third anniversary, they've got an insane amount of things in store, free gifts, a bunch of new content and events, new champions, new artifact sets, and a fully personalized video showcasing every player's raid journey and achievements. If you're not playing raid yet hit my link in the description or scan my QR code, you'll get a special huge birthday package worth $40. It includes 3 Champions Miseracord, Tiger Soul, Romero, plus 10 Magic XP Brews, 10 Force XP Brews and 10 Spirit Brews. All this treasure will be waiting for you here. All new and existing players can get a bunch of free birthday gifts worth over $25. Once in-game, after clicking on the links, just enter this promo code to get your hands on everything. The cross-species love affair early humans engaged in with their near relatives is no secret, according to National Geographic. Each and every person on Earth today carries traces of DNA derived from ancient hominin species to a varying extent, a chunk of genetic material that comes with its own set of pros and cons. For example, Neanderthal DNA has been linked to depression, social anxiety, promiscuity, as well as diseases such as Crohn's disease and lupus, and may even increase our propensity to smoke. And yet, at the same time, it is thought that the genetic variants inherited from Neanderthals, including those that affect skin and hair color, may have helped Eurasians survive in the colder, harsher climes of the northern latitudes. What about the Denisovans, first discovered in the Altai Mountains, and informally known as Homo Altaiensis? We currently know much more about the DNA of Homo Altaiensis than we do about their physical appearance, as fossils are exceedingly rare. Evidence suggests that Homo Neanderthalensis, Homo Altaiensis, and modern humans are all descended from a common ancestor. DNA evidence suggests this common ancestor lived about 600,000 to 750,000 years ago. Besides a single finger bone, a total of three teeth have been genetically identified as Homo altaiensis. The DNA from a tiny fragment of long bone from the daughter of Homo altaiensis and Neanderthal parents provides direct evidence that the two groups met and interbred at least once. We know little about the geographic distribution of Homo altaiensis, except for the head-scratching finding that Aboriginal Australians and New Guineans are the only people alive today, with substantial amounts of Homo altaiensis DNA in their genome. Remarkably, scientists have proposed that Homo altaiensis somehow managed to cross one of the world's most prominent marine barriers in Indonesia, and later interbred with modern humans moving through the area on the way to Australia and New Guinea. Scientists delved into the genetics of the Pacific population to trace the history of human settlement across the vast region, with a few surprising results. 
A study of ancient DNA suggests that a mysterious subspecies of ancient humans could have reached Australia after crossing Wallace's line in Southeast Asia. They survived the Toba eruption 74,000 years ago, while Homo erectus went extinct on Java. It would be amazing if Homo altiensis hadn't reached Australia, a crossing made simpler by much lower sea levels in the Paleolithic. Indeed, if you cross Wallace's line you've done all the hard work. While no Homo altiensis remains have so far been found outside of Siberia, such discoveries could just be waiting to be found. By examining the genomes of over 300 present-day individuals from 20 populations, geneticists found that the ancestors of modern-day Pacific populations interbred with a little-understood ancient hominin. The mystery relative could have been a population related to Homo altiensis, or something more distantly related, such as Homo erectus or a Homo altiensis and erectus hybrid. Indeed, the dates positioned this ghost species as something akin to a tropical Neanderthal. This genetic mixture seems to have bolstered the immune system and helped these early explorers adapt to living on isolated islands. Melanesians have an extremely unusual trait, they often have the darkest skin in the world outside of Africa, yet about one-fourth of them have blonde curly hair. Their unique appearance must be due to their intricate ancestry, which involved a lot of admixture. That's when two or more previously isolated populations within a species mix. In their case, it looks like the interbreeding included modern humans, Neanderthals, Homo altiensis, and or a mystery human group who some call the tropical Neanderthals. The pattern can only be explained if Homo altiensis had succeeded in crossing Wallace's line, the world's most formidable biogeographic barrier. It is formed by powerful marine currents along the east coast of Borneo, and divides Eurasian mammals and Australasian marsupials. The only place where such a genetic signal exists appears to be in areas east of Wallace's line and that is where scientists think interbreeding took place, even though it means that Homo altiensis must have somehow made that formidable marine crossing. What do we know about the peopling of the Pacific? The populating of the Pacific is one of the most impressive feats of exploration in human history. The Pacific Ocean is the single largest feature on the planet, sprinkled with islands that are fairly close together in the west but separated by larger and larger gaps towards the east, until there are thousands of miles between islands. This enormous region is divided into near Oceania, including Papua New Guinea, the Bismarck Archipelago and the Solomon Islands, and remote Oceania, including Micronesia, Santa Cruz, Vanuatu, New Caledonia, Fiji and Polynesia. Our current understanding is that after humans migrated out of Africa, they flowed through Southeast Asia, hopping across narrow straits and between islands. They used rafts or canoes to cross to Papua New Guinea, then headed down the side curve of the Bismarck Archipelago, and reached the far edge of the Solomon Islands by around 40,000 years ago. There, nothing but the open ocean lay ahead of them, and so these people, the near Oceanians, stopped, and remote Oceania remained uninhabited. Then some 5,000 years ago, a group of humans from Taiwan left their home shores and journeyed south through the Philippines and Indonesia into near Oceania. Called Austronesians, they brought with them sophisticated maritime technology and seafaring skills. They mixed with populations of the near Oceanians, forging a new people, the Lapita, who then struck out to populate the rest of the Pacific. The new genetic analysis suggests that the gene pool of the ancestors of near Oceanians underwent a drastic reduction just before they settled in the region, with an effective population size of only 214 people. The study also dated the settlement of near Oceania to around 40,000 years ago, confirming archaeological records, and found evidence that after settling, the populations of different islands generally kept to themselves. The results confirm that humans were able to cross the seas, to reach new lands from an early stage. However, they also suggest that these voyages were relatively infrequent at this distant period in history. The analyses suggest that humans left Taiwan more than 5,000 years ago, and that admixture between the Austronesian incomers and the populations of near Oceania started only 2,000 years later. The expansions from Taiwan, therefore, took some time, and may have involved a maturation phase in the Philippines or Indonesia. The study also revealed the percentage of ancient human DNA present in modern-day Pacific populations. 
While all humans outside of Africa have inherited Neanderthal DNA, around 2 to 3 percent, some Pacific populations have inherited more than 3 percent of their genomes from Homo altiensis and the mysterious tropical Neanderthals. The hot tropical island environment of Melanesia, a group of islands to the northeast of Australia that include Solomon Island, Fiji, Vanuatu, and Papua New Guinea, is likely to have required certain adaptations related to diet, infectious disease, and body size. Most surprisingly, the Homo altiensis legacy varies considerably between Pacific island populations, with up to 3.2% in Papua New Guinea and Vanuatu. The high presence of Homo altiensis genes in Vanuatu is especially surprising given its very remote location. There are other groups in the Philippines and the Andaman Islands that have levels of Homo altiensis and genes up to 5%. Previous work has shown that Neanderthal DNA has improved the adaptive capacity of modern humans, with beneficial mutations, including those related to skin pigmentation, metabolism, and neural development. This new study now shows that admixture with Homo altiensis bolstered the immune system of Pacific populations, which may have helped humans adapt to and survive local pathogens, when they spread into isolated island environments. Plus, the mixing between humans and Homo altiensis didn't occur just once, at least four independent mixing events occurred with at least two different lineages of Homo altiensis, as recently as 21,000 years ago. Collectively, the analyses show that interbreeding between modern humans and highly structured groups of archaic hominins was a common phenomenon in the Asia-Pacific region. Candidates for the mystery archaic DNA include Homo floresiensis and Homo luzonesis, who are probably closely related groups from Indonesia and the Philippines. This also improves our understanding of the elusive Homo altiensis. One of the strengths of these analyses is that, by studying the 3% of archaic heritage present in the genomes of modern humans, one can resurrect Homo altiensis genomes and thus show that they had high levels of genetic diversity. The field of anthropology has long held an implicit assumption that modern human admixture with Homo altiensis occurred in much the same way it did with Neanderthals. This new data clearly shows that this assumption is unfounded. Mixing between modern humans and archaic groups was much more structured, and occurred much later, in the Asia-Pacific region. It appears that Homo altiensis persisted in Oceania long after modern humans arrived, and sharing territory with these and other archaic hominins, such as the mysterious tropical Neanderthals, was part of the modern human story for a long period of our history. In Europe, female Neanderthals bred with male Homo sapiens, but, intriguingly, the genetic data suggest that male Homo altiensis interbred with modern human females, indicating the potential nature of the interactions, as small numbers of modern humans first crossed Wallace's line and entered Homo altiensis territory. Because the study of Homo altiensis physical traits is based on a single individual and the technique only returns relative measurements, researchers caution that it's an imperfect reflection of what the species looked like. Only more Homo altiensis fossils can confirm whether this portrait is accurate. If you were to find a single Homo sapiens fossil, and it was Shaquille O'Neal, then you might conclude that all Homo sapiens were 7 feet tall, so we can't verify the predictions until several Homo altiensis skeletons are found. Nevertheless, this research contributes to the ever-growing canon of research, demonstrating the promiscuous species crossing and complicated behaviors of our ancestors. The discovery of another enigmatic ancient human species, Homo floresiensis, the so-called hobbits, in Flores, Indonesia, confirms that the diversity of archaic human relatives in this area was much higher than we'd thought. Knowing that Homo altiensis spread beyond a significant sea barrier opens up all sorts of questions about the behaviors and capabilities of this group, and how far they could have spread. The key questions now are where and when the ancestors of current humans, who were on their way to colonize New Guinea and Australia around 70,000 years ago, met and interacted with Homo altiensis. <laughs>